this guy. Nope. This one. Nope. This guy. Nope. Oh, this one. It's a guy called Pet. Nope. This guy. Do FPV on this guy. Nope. This one. No. No. Not much. Maybe. Maybe we'll do this guy's FPV. Oh my gosh, this guy. Oh. This one. Mm. See what do we have? Uh, this guy's already a PV. This one, yeah, this this one already a PV. Mm, not suitable. This one maybe we do it in the future. This guy already. This guy. So, hmm. Well, why not? This guy looks interesting. Maybe it's good for a PV. Okay, let's do this. This one will do FPV on it soon, but not now. All right, there we go. So I think we're going to do FPV on this guy. So we're going to do some conversion, FPV conversion on this legendary wild wheelie two. Should have a nice view in front if you put FPV camera. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to do FPV setup on Wild Wheelie 2. Okay, let's do this. But first, we need to get some ingredients. Mm hmm. This one. Okay. Since I'm running a RC4G radio, I need this receiver. Got no, I got a lot of them. All right. FPV camera. Uh, I better check if this thing working or not. Have some. I need boss cam. 5.8 gigahertz this is 600 milliwatt boss cam 4.5.8 gigahertz 48 channel transmitter 600 milliwatt should give me a good range i need a sound system uh, this one is ess dual i'm gonna put it on my wild fpv wild really i need yeah i need the new esc for my wild really i need the Camera pan servo. I prefer Metal Gear. I think I need two servo because another servo is for the steering. And I need a reliable BEC back, external back. So this one is, uh, this one is Hobby Wing. Yeah, this is Hobby Wing U back. Maybe I use it on my to extend the lens module out to the to the driver's head you know the, for the camera you yeah. extend the lens out uh, rear camera since i have a camera switcher this is the micro mm, nano cmos camera I'm not sure if that thing support 5 volt or 3.3 volt uh, okay so this one I'm going to use as a, like a reverse camera so i can see something from behind I need 3.3 volt for the micro camera just in case a 3.3 volt BEC back U back I need some wiring Yeah I've got some surplus wiring so I'm going to build FPV based on my specification just like how just like how I did on my previous RC APV RC truck as usual uh, we need a video transmitter this is the one I bought from Banggood it's very cheap I think I bought it for $9 600 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz 
brush EAC, this one running on brush EAC, I want to use reliable one, I always use the hobby wing 60M splash proof waterproof the back internal back is reliable it can power up to recommended maximum up to three servo one big steering one and two smaller nine gram so i prefer always prefer use the hobby wing esc i'm going to use the all recycle the all run cam camera as the fpv camera you've seen the quality before on my uh, k949 fpv truck this is the one but i'm going to remove the casing and everything to make it more compact and fit into the wild wheelie so this is the camera and for fpv can be the output i need this one this cable used to extend the lens out from the pcb body of the run cam so if you want to isolate the camera lens, camera lens module out into the cockpit driver's head this is the one i always use uh, it actually fits for run cam split the latest run cam but if you're using older run cam or 808 number 16 hd keychain camera you need to remove two of this pin to make it more narrow so it can fit into the older camera such as the run cam one I think this one costs around five four dollar at Banggood. Pretty much everything I bought from Banggood because it's cheaper and it's closest to my country. As usual, I need two servo. This one is nine gram, uh, nine gram size servo. One's for the head pan, for the camera pan. One is for the steering column. I mean, you know that uh, scale little steering thing for the driver. External VEC. I'm using the reliable Hobby Wing U back. It's a uh, 3M, 3M U back. This one is used to uh, to power critical parts such as the uh, receiver, camera, uh, uh, my sound system and stuff. So this one power the critical one while the one that have a back inside the internal EAC used to power the later and important ones such as the uh, steering column and stuff. So this is the external view back. This receiver actually I bought from Hobby King. This one compatible with my RC4 radio link RC4G transmitter as proven before rc4g radio link rc4g have a very good plenty of range i've already hit uh, almost to one kilometer you know at the park no problem so yes i think this one has a built-in gyro like the stock receiver well let's check it out later so this one has four channel so uh, i can control steering throttle one channel for the pan camera one channel maybe to activate the uh, sound system like horn or maybe to activate the rear camera right this is the 520 tvl cmos camera i'm going this is secondary camera i'm going to use it to put it at the rear so i can see what's behind the rear by activating uh, extra channel on my controller this one very old camera i used on my uh, you know maybe six or seven years ago drone you know, the ladybird drone fpv drone yeah all right another one is the camera switcher this one is the two channel activated camera switcher so you can switch between two camera from main camera to the secondary camera so i need this module 3.3 external back for my cmos 520 tvl nano camera just in case if it doesn't support 5 volt because i believe it will actually running on 3.3 volt lastly but not least is the ESS innovation sound system so like all my FPV truck 
all my FPV truck have this simulated engine sound like turbo horn and stuff to make it more scale and more make it feel more realistic when driving the truck but this one is a bit different the previous all three truck that have sound system is actually ESS1 but this one is actually ESS dual have dual speaker this one just arrived last week yeah nice still mean oh hold on I have a lot of these this is very nice yes yeah, as dual dual sound dual speaker nice I'm looking forward to use it to make it sounds very you know cool like realistic on my dummy how well we have PV soon and also wires you need to lay out wires to connect all those uh, uh, connection to the hardware so you need them lastly but not least i forgot this one this is essential this is the osd on-screen display this is a must for fpv so this is actually a classic fpv OSD module that let out information such as time and voltage on the live FPV feed screen. So this is the one. Uh, okay, this is uh, a boss from Banggood RCD three zero six zero dual voltage OSD support in the CM pair. So this is essential part, and I have it hundred percent on all my FPV trucks. And that's all the stuff you need to start building an FPV truck and if I short of something I'll put extra hardware and mention it to you later if needed so let's get started and make a cool FPV while wheelie my standard so so we're going to do some cleanup on the wire wheelie, remove those stock electronics. So we're gonna remove this guy soon. There's a lot of space to put the electronics inside. You can see the this is the stop uh, EAC and receiver. We're going to remove this. One thing I like about wild wheelie chases, even though it's not four wheel drive, is uh. It has a bigger tire, has a very big clearance, suitable for APV. I've tried to drive it on the grass, everywhere, it really rolls and actually it's running on uh, independent suspension front and rear. It's very supple, so I don't think it shakes a lot on board FPV camera, even Removing the batteries can be done by removing the clip here without having to open the body shell And it's kind of cute Of course, it's a tummy away really Look at the bumper ah, ah. Well, I know it's very durable and fun to, uh, truck to drive on We're going to remove the driver and the steering I think it's quite hard. Uh, there's a screw here. Need to remove the driver. So here's the driver. I expected to put servo somewhere inside here, and maybe I have to detach the arm here. The arm have to be movable with the steering column, you know, to make it more animated, so more realistic. So I'm gonna do it soon. So 
so this is what left for the chassis I need to do some modification on this steering column so that this part can move together with the arm so I'm gonna put servo behind here and servo on this one so it's going to be using Metal Gear Servo tough as for the camera maybe I lug it beside here because I'm not gonna ruin the aesthetic you know looks of the original Y Wheelie driver so assume that I put here like like a GoPro design or somewhere I will we'll try it out soon but so far I don't have a clue how because the cockpit is very cramped to put the camera unlike all my other FPV models so it's kind of struggle to get a good view of the steering and everything first we need to work out on the ESC and also I need to bind the radio so I'm gonna open the ESC fresh and new Originally, it is on the NIMH setting, uses NIMH battery, the front brake and reverse switch here, jumper is correct, but the battery, we need to switch the jumper to LiPo, to the LiPo, yeah, switch the this thing to LiPo. Right. There we go. That's the correct jumper setting. I'm not gonna use this uh, Tamiya style plug. I'm gonna re use the XT60 connectors to connect to my battery. This one is okay. But I need to put a bit dent here. I mean, uh, an have to remove this this one so that I can branch the power to supply power to VTX U external U back. So I'm gonna do is this now but first I need to oh yeah I need to change this one to XT60 plug. You need to do tinting, tint, put the lead all over the exposed connector so it's easy to do soldering on the XT60 plug. It sink sleeve put here, and we have a XT60 already soldered a bit. Now there's a polarity on top saying plus and minus down here. So the positive is up here. So I'm gonna do soldering. So done. Put the sleeve in, heat shrink, sleeve inside. Use a lighter to seal the heat shrink. Now we need to peel it out so that we can tap the we need to actually center the servo to make sure it is uh, at the center location I've already reset all the trimming on my RC4G it's, uh, now it's actually receiver already bind to the uh, radio so I need to do trimming for uh, so I put this servo here connected to the yeah connected to this on shake it so now I find the 
put the servo on first to let uh, to let you know yourself this this is already centered okay so apply it to other the other servo so this one is already centered let's check the video transmitter uh, 5.8 here it goes this one have a microphones so we're going to do some cabling connection need to tap the 2s power into this one but before that i need to check which plug to connect here's the connector here's the one if the manufacturer follow the instruction this one should be uh, let me see okay this part here should have uh, the power from the e ESC's power output here red and black so this guy here should tap extra power from the ESC's connector this one I think should go to the video video camera but before that it should go to the OSD so I'm going to do the soldering to this one here but at the same time do the wire management as you can see I'm going to tap power source from the ESC to power the video transmitter and the U back the external back onto the the how say 2s power battery uh, input into the ESC so these all three devices have to tap the power from the same power supply wire right here so I'm, to, I'm going to do the soldering now The, as you can see, managed to tap all the hardware into the same power source. Uh, negative point, negative point, positive point into bundle of this U back and also plug to the VTX. So we have to put the heat shrink to protect the connection from exposed shortage. Here's the heat shrink. I put it earlier before I put the XT60 in. Okay, done. Fully protected wiring. So time to put it on the paste it on the uh, model. So time to attach the video transmitter on the platform. Is the flat surface? I'm going to put the PTX on the EAC in here. okay guys so we are done with the placement of the EAC uh, external back and the video transmitter as you can see right here EAC the U back external back and then the 3.3 volt back and also video transmitter located at the back this is the uh, antenna port the one gonna work on it so uh, if you read my article in the website about building the FPV truck, the most noisy uh, electronics, I have to put far at the back at the rear so I can put the uh, uh, radio sensitive receiver on the front. So there's a huge separation of radio uh, interference away from them, from each other. So, yeah. And uh, we proceed to do the other thing. So we're going to work with the OSD module. So 
this one is the RCD3060 um, OSD module I think this is the same one I use on my old FPV uh, OSD so actually I'm planning to remove this uh, uh, I don't want to use the pin it's kind of you know messy so yeah remove the pin first okay as you can see here this is where you connect the battery output to detect the battery sensor this one going to the video output with the grounding video input in that's a video input out all right i need to look at the manual again i forgot this one is to shift the osd layout since i don't want to use the pin i'll I rather use the direct solder so i'm gonna remove the pin out of the way nice and clean okay guys i found the schematics so this is the schematics for rc3060 you can connect first and secondary battery support two battery to detect a uh, battery voltage video input video output or you can connect multiple but most popular way for me to connect is actually by using a single wire connection to camera and dtx while this one remains the same this is the bad one the bad two should have the indicator on the board this is the osd layout button yeah so that's how you connect it okay guys i've done connecting the osd to the power supply but this power supply actually from the ESC uh, from the main power supply so it detects the voltage battery through VTX because ESC is power connected to the VTX raw power of 2S and then 2S also is directly connected to the VTX going out to the OSD and we have the video output from the VTX going to the OSD's video output port and from this OST, we're going to connect it to the uh, camera switcher. This camera switcher support up to two camera, main camera. So I'm gonna put main camera and the rear camera viewing. So what what makes it able to switch between the front and rear camera is the PWM input from the third or fourth channel controller here that's it so I'm gonna connect this one to the OSD to connect to the OSD I have to use the AV out and the ground here this is the run cam cable the video output cable to the run cam camera so I'm gonna solder that one first Okay, I partially done connecting the wires to the the switcher. So this one going to the radio. The outer one is going to the camera, main camera. This one going to the VTX, but first through the OSD. And this one going to connect it soon next to the for the rear camera. Alright guys, I managed to connect the rear view camera which is the secondary camera connected to the see you can see this uh, uh, 
positive and negative voltage connected to the external 3.3 volt uh, u back and while the grounding for the video uh, grounding in the live uh, video input wire going straight to the let's see connected straight to the video switcher right here yeah you can see here the wiring connected to the video switcher so we are done with the connecting to the secondary uh, camera so this secondary camera fits nicely on the frame behind the wire wheelie as you can see here it's uh this is the main frame fits nicely it the boxy shape see so i can see who's behind me when i driving fast on the road so here see fit nice smooth yeah so i want to check if need to see how to fit this dual uh, ess dual sound system could fit on wire wheelie body but I don't, i'm not going to ruin the aesthetic looks of the wire wheelie yet because i don't want to make it look so bulky but pretty much it looks too big to fit onto the wire wheelie body it's way too big to fit in it's just too big so let's see if we can put underneath i don't think so it's 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 going to hinder the fitting of the ch chassis not even here it's way too big it has a two speaker so i think i want to make a decision to remove this speaker remove the whole thing and put each of the speaker inside this uh, void here so like it can create some kind of like uh, boxes of sound to trap the sound to make it you know yeah and uh, enhance the sound rather once we remove the out of the case so let's let's dismantle this thing all right okay it's just made of out of tiny parts so it's cool so that is all about it uh so we managed to remove the component and i think we should able to fit the speaker inside here yeah all right i think this is cool so one in the back one on the front so i gotta do some soldering to extend the cable and uh, put these switches here maybe on the wall uh, so guys i have done adding the ess dual sound system onto the wild wheelie chassis the two speaker is located inside the body shell cavity it's actually attached using just a hot glue it's strong enough to hold it on the speaker the heavy speaker i just hot glue underneath the hood here there's another one at the rear tank and also for the board you can see the pcb board the, the one that controls the sound is actually underneath the seat here as you can see and here's the button if i need to adjust the volume or the modes and i remove the sticker and put it again so i know which button to uh, press as correlated to the buttons right here this is the wiring this is to power the speaker um this one connected to the throttle channel share with the throttle channel this one is the auxiliary channel to activate the horn so this is how I install my ESS1 sound hardware, engine simulator sound hardware, 2D, while Willy chases. 
So next we're gonna put the pan camera. So we're gonna start with the servo works. So here's the driver of the wild wheelie. I'm gonna put the servo behind here so that the head can move to animate the head moving. So inside the cockpit it feels like alive. Yeah. So I have to unscrew these bits inside here and put the servo shaft and connect it to the head. So I've done stuff the servo into the head of the driver. The reason I put the 9 gram servo into the head of the driver because it doesn't fit behind the uh, the body here. Because if I put the servo behind it, it's going to hit the seat of the body shell. So it won't fit. So the head actually more bigger have cavity inside. So I rather put the servo in the head actually remove the plastic in the hole so the bigger bulky part of the servo shaft can sit properly inside the head and it can turn around like this see so i'm gonna put the servo horn inside here to lock it off so i'm gonna custom build a 5.8 gigahertz antenna so I'm gonna reuse this thing to the Omni back and then to fit it into the long antenna here so that uh, I can get the higher uh, clearance from the ground to fit behind the wild wheelie. First yes, I need to remove the need to remove the bell end. There we go, this antenna are actually pre-cut. Put it here. So bring out some connectors to connect to the uh, transmitter. So guys, this is uh, finally a completed version of my new build FPV while we need uh, to truck so as you can see it's already completely built finish the FPV camera is here is running a run cam you can see here it's a run cam HD camera the first version I already removed to naked strip and actually remove the lens and connected remotely using external cable see this is the camera here wire wire and it's actually there's an extension to extend from the neck of the wire wheelie helmet to the camera I'm using a RC car wishbone with adjustable uh, push rod here to connect it to the camera lens and it, I can adjust the tilt mechanism to go up and down or whatever I want 
so as you can see this one connected to servo it can pan around so this is connected this servo on the head connected to channel 3 3 then mix to channel 1 of the steering servo as a mix programming uh, on your controller it depends for me i use the rc4g radio link to uh, connect it as a radio here is the monopole antenna i modified i don't want to use the clover leaf keep it scale put it longer so that to avoid from ground interference away from the ground so this underneath here there's a BTX chassis here is the receiver antenna the radio link receiver antenna are located here I make an extension to put it on the front so if you can if you want to know that I always built an FPV truck with a huge separation between two radios one transmitter away 5.8 gigahertz away from the front receiver 2.4 receiver RC4G radio link yeah. as you can see it's fully scale nice you know you don't see like typical FPV PV truck have this lot of protruding PV hardware to make it look so Frankenstein and this one is purely scale nice then you can see from inside I put the uh, FPV hardware this is where I access the run cam memory card as you can see this is how I this is the run cam camera connected to the extension ribbon cable going to the back here the driver seat including the servo wire for the pen uh, I like to let you know this is uh, the steering also is functional the steering here is not original uh, while we need this one slightly bigger and connected to the 9 gram servo down there so there's a two extra servo running this while wheelie 9 gram metal gear one is for the steering uh, one is for the head pan one is for the steering to make it looks more authentic scale driving in the cockpit okay so now we're going to open what is inside the while wheelie oh i forgot i have to let you know actually while wheelie has two camera live fpv fit one right the main camera as usual is the front one here that's the main driving camera and we have a reverse camera like this one so with this camera activated on channel 4 so when I activate channel 4 camera on the channel 4 button I can see what's behind me especially when I do some reverse or I want to see if my second FPV buddy who's driving behind me so I can see what's happening behind me or especially if there's a car passing behind me so I can use this rear camera it's actually live FPV feed it's not the one that you know you, you use recordable camera so this is the live FPV feed camera switchable between two camera is a, a, a switch camera module to channel on the fourth channel uh, radio so I'm gonna open inside so there's going to be a lot of wiring inside I have to carefully remove it as you can see this wire connected to the run cam module PCB board I can remove it it's USB connected power cable to power the dual ESS sound system you got the sound system here remove the power cable it's a bit hard this is the horn servo this sound system support horn sound instead of engine 
also have to disconnect this one this is steering servo head camera servo and also lastly the engine sound system that activates the engine through throttle channel so this one tap to the throttle channel so this is how i remove it so i'm gonna show you uh, uh in the previous build i did make some changes okay and at the back is run cam hd version one so one module version one module i remove the casing and instead wrap it in the electric tape and then uh, glue it using a hot glue to connect the rear chassis this is the stop button you can see the external uh, lens cable is going from here behind the seat through the hole and then go here All right yeah go through this camera and also uh, camera head servo you can see the wiring goes to here and come up from here for the head moving around that's the, that's the servo inside I already showed it in the previous video and also there's uh, another servo it's on I, con I actually hot glue another servo 5 gram to control the steering movement as you can see I can move the steering like I shown in the video it's kind of hard because it's metal gear so it's very strong another wire is the throttle wire throttle sound system to activate the throttle sound and the horn sound this is supposed to connect to fourth channel since my radio have four channel but one of the channel occupied by the uh, camera switch so this can be uh, additional auxiliary but you can see a demo from my previous video on my other FPV truck if you want to hear how the horn sound sounds like okay so this is all it so you can, as you know there's a two servo a camera module in a sound system all inside the so-called uh, wild wheelie body chassis so as you can see here this is my final build what is look like for my FPV while Tamiya wild wheelie 2 so this is the electronics completely assembled already put on the chassis uh, yeah it's okay it's quite light after the build after removing all the unnecessary parts no more pins connected or directly soldered so the 5.8 gigahertz transmitter 600 milliwatt boss cam is located right here in the behind see underneath here underneath the osd this is the osd this is the esc this is the 3.5 volt back to power the uh, very old nano CMOS cam because it, this thing have to run on 3.3 volt. So this back is dedicated for this camera. And this U back, this is a hobby wing. This is the hobby wing 5.5.5A, 5B, 5V, 5M to power to power the receiver to power the uh, camera switching module to power the run cam camera uh, what again uh, to power the uh, the oh yeah I've got the dual ESS sound system so those are the main electronics you need to power the ESC has its own internal bag but I use them to power more mechanical stuff such as the to power the servo the main steering servo and also to power the other servo that I mentioned before the head and the, the scale steering on the cockpit you know those servo movement so because most likely uh, if this thing go over, overheat and shut down it will not affect the most critical uh, 
electronic such as this receiver uh, the camera and everything because this one is powered separately from its own back okay. so let's see you can see down here this is the if you look carefully in my earlier build this is the two channel camera switching module so by default by default uh, this one is on connected to the main camera if i press channel 4 button it will actually automatically switch it to rear camera so this one actually control the switch camera switch so i can have two camera running like front and rear to see what's behind me and what is on front me so this one i bought it from banggood okay more, pretty much everything is meant for banggood okay except this one i bought from hobby King. so if you want this is the radio link rc4g compatible receiver actually uh in hobby king they rebranded as trackstar ts4 ts4 what ts4 G, DS4G, yeah, DS4G, pretty much the same as RC4G, and it gives me uh, equal amount of uh, radio distance. Okay. So you can see it's actually four channel. First channel is the steering. Uh, first channel is on the control the steering. Second channel is controlling the throttle. Okay, and the throttle actually is also branched to connect to my radio. Uh, my sound system which is to, to provide the throttle uh, to throttle sound so we branch the to output okay uh, the third channel is occupied by camera and servo on the driver's head and also uh, connected to the onboard uh, cockpit steering configuring to on on right and the fourth is the one that controls the fourth channel is to control the camera module right here this is the camera module all right so i would like to repeat again this is the osd the most simplest osd rc uh, i think i mentioned before it can have a uh, two battery sensor so far uh, this one connected to the battery plug here so it can sense how many voltage I have left and lay it out on the whole FPV screen this is to position the layout of the FPV uh, uh, like I said voltage and time I can adjust this this voltage time either put it on the top frame or down frame so this is the button to control it and this here the port is going into the video transmitter video transmitter input all right another one it has a grounding connected to the video transmitter this is the this is the input port that fits that connect to the uh, video uh, video switcher module here so of course here course here fit inside there and then from there it will lay back into the video transmitter module okay, okay so that is pretty much uh, most vital component in my FPV build oh, oh I forgot to tell you this is the, the run cam USB connection to the PCB board yeah so that's it so this is uh, how i built my fpv truck you know so if you want to know more information about you know the the schematics the, the schematics that i built on all my fpv truck i did have it documented on my website so you can go there and do reference and you can see the how how individual wire is connected through the schematics so no need to worry if you are very lost in this video you can go to my website uh, on the down the links uh, in the youtube description and check out 
uh, already built a lot of FPV truck, a lot of FPV plane. So far, it's been very successful, and the circuit is, you know, hundred percent very reliable. Okay, guys, if you wanna see how the thing works, we got this truck, an FPV goggle, controller, the battery in. I've inserted another battery. Uh, 2200 mAh 2S LiPo plug in the FPV goggle power supply power the goggle all right also we start powering the uh, wire wheelie kind of loud reduce the sound as you can see this is the uh, moving the steering the head is moving or you can manually move the head from the stream so when you move the steering you can actually override it from channel 3 so so how does this thing works on this channel 3 you can see how did I mix the steering with this head on channel 3 and channel 1 I did some mixing on my RC4G if you on RC4G mix it from this setting p mix as you can see the master channel steering the slave is channel 3 so the steering the steering uh, and the the steering and the FPV head on the channel 3 so you can see here steering channel 1 mix with slave channel 3 to channel 3 servo put it to mix and then you can trim how much you want to throw when the head is moving on the left or right side so left I put it 100 throw right on the 100 throw and that's how I did the mixing and the override yeah. this is for the channel 4 to activate the rear camera so you can see it like if I okay hold on uh. I exit first you can check it on the auxiliary so you can see channel 3 control VR or uh, since it's also, also already mixed with the channel 1 you can do like this yeah this for the head this is for the see channel 4 for switching the camera front camera and then switch to the rear camera front rear front and front rear so that's how I did different controller have different different type of setting for for radio link that's how I did it so that's it and for and from the sound you can hear the engine sound as I throttle. I increase the volume first. Where's the volume? From the engine.
so you can see the engine support the uh, idling gear shift and the sound of the tuba boost also then there's an auxiliary channel for the horn also so it's quite nice to make the wild wheelie drive like a real truck okay how did i program the engine sound the engine sound actually you can modify it and store into two uh, sound profile but how did i updated it into the hardware i actually using the ess sense innovation usb programming that connects the ess dual sound hardware the one with the three pin connector the servo connector into this hole right here and then you plug it to the computer so i'll show you how it works so here's the extension i just connect it to the extension here and we have to remove the one of the cables there it goes so i'm gonna remove this uh, ess sound connector three pin the one i just showed you to you just now this is the auxiliary uh, servo uh, auxiliary channel for activating the horn this is the throttle chain to connect to the throttle channel the, this one come connected to the uh, the ess dual sound board so we have to connect that one to here there we go so this is how we program it so let's see how i connect it to the computer see i'm connecting the ess one to the computer to my notebook all right i am going to connect to the rc plus client which is the ess uh, dual programming interface the one that helps to upload the sound it's gonna wait until the thing loading okay that one is my fms 1.4 meter mustang uh, i think you saw it in a hanger okay <laughs> So the interface did came out. Show it to you. This is the engine sound. All right. As you can see on the screen, this is what is contained sound that is containing the wild wheelie. This is using the shock cost buggy C. It has a sound of the disc brake, turbo, and also a horn. For example, the one that you heard before is the sound like this. Okay, you can add sound of the brake, and also I already include the sound of the turbo. You can listen to it. Yeah, so you can change the sound by selecting change. Oops, sorry. Click change. There's a lot of sound that I've downloaded, including Honda Civic Sound. <laughs> Even there is a Grand Cherokee engine sound. Ford Focus. Or 
you can select anywhere from the online store so you have to connect to the internet you know yeah there we have a off-road yes we have a drift call oh we have nascar we have f1 here off-road so there's a lot of engine sound that you can select from even from trucks car components it support aircraft you know boat car components we have the disc brakes turbo system everything everything you need to make your car sounds like a real thing under the hood including the hks turbo turbo braking uh yeah <laughs> there's a lot of turbo sound here we also for the auxiliary channel you can add on horn for channel 4 for example most popular horns like on my truck that you have seen from the previous video i actually like to use the dixie horn by bill delong i think you can find him in the rc group yes i think you heard before from the previous video on 10428 wl toys four wheel drive truck so that's the horn that you heard before so that's it so that's how i changed the setup for the uh, engine sound on my wild wheelie or you can actually make your custom sound you upload your custom sound and a lot of stuff so so i mean like yeah great man make your wild relief sounds very real for your fpv use so can't wait to test it out outdoors and let's do this okay man going to do some driving fpv driving so guys we are at the local park going to test drive our newly built fpv wild wheelie See there's a camera right here and we already inserted the battery we're going to test our our last favorite fpv park that i always around around this my fpv it's a very huge place so we can test the range on 600 milliwatt fpv 5.8 turn on the radio i have my fpv google boss cam with the earphone Do this.
watching the video on how I built this FPV wild wheelie and also the driving experience inside the cockpit of a wild wheelie and if you're curious more about how do you want to build your own FPV truck go and visit my website at https double slash www.supermotoxl.com www.supermotoxl.com to get more info about how you build an FPV truck not only that you can also learn how to build uh, FPV planes and a lot of stuff inside there because any models that I built I always documented it uh, on my own web page and including schematics electronics and parts that is built into this truck and also uh, my FPV planes so I hope you enjoy the video and see you next on my next build or next FPV adventures see you soon